When you start playing a new Battlefield game, sometimes it can be quite difficult getting to grips with the new vehicles. Maybe you aren't used to Battlefield games, or possibly you have never really used tanks in the past. Maybe you just haven't tried them out yet because you don't have the time to learn which is the best one. Well, don't worry, in this video I'm going to outline which tanks are best for each faction and what they excel at. I'll also bring some useful tips and tricks to extend your killstreaks, bring you higher up the scoreboard and perhaps, most essentially, be an effective member of your squad and team. Now, as with previous tank guides I've made in the past, there have been a couple of things that I may have missed. Leave these down in the comments. If I say a certain tank isn't good at something and you know for a fact that it is, make sure you correct me down below just so I can learn something, but at the same time, the people who are watching this video can also learn something that I may not have mentioned. Starting out, I would like to say one thing. The tanks in BF5 are a lot different to those in previous Battlefield games, which means you can't play in the same way. Yes, DICE have kept some of the mechanics and features from BF1, such as the way you spawn in, the animations getting in and out of the tank, and the repair system, but the variants have gone and instead we have a specialization skill tree. That skill tree is really quite important if you want to be effective. You have to be very careful in tanks on Battlefield 5. One enemy assault player can take you down, and even with the recent patch changing the way the Panzerfaust works slightly, tanks are still incredibly vulnerable, and I wouldn't be surprised if DICE continue to balance them into the future, making them slightly better in CQB, especially against assault players. Mines on the ground are also incredibly difficult to see. You can get bombed from the sky, taken out by other tanks at range, and all in all, it's pretty difficult staying alive, never mind getting a lot of kills. I think the tanks clearly do enough damage as it is now, but with assault players being so powerful, getting the right balance can be difficult, and it often leads to tankers sitting on hills and shooting targets at range. Maybe this is historically accurate, especially with some of the German tanks, but is that fun? Is that something you want in a Battlefield game that has previously had fantastic, dynamic tank gameplay? Here's a few tips just to start the video off. The main tip right here is a simple one. If you want to play even slightly aggressively in a tank, you must play with infantry alongside you, and hopefully a gunner on top if the tank allows you to have that. Especially as the gunners can now duck down, they have a bit more of a chance to survive. A lone tank is almost certainly a dead tank. Dodging rockets is really important, but very difficult. The turret on your tank is really weak, however you can't dodge out of the way unless you completely conceal yourself behind cover, meaning sometimes it's better to have a smaller tank than a larger tank if cover is hard to find. Speed is key, unless you enjoy camping way back from the objectives. For that reason, choosing the smaller faster tanks can often be better if you want to get aggressive and onto the objective. That being said, the large tanks are pretty good, although I'm not going to focus on them in this video, they can be good. You just have to be a bit more passive and possibly have a couple of infantry backing you up, maybe offering some repairs when you inevitably start getting spammed by Panzerfausts. On the Allied side, you get to choose from the following tanks. The Churchill Gun Carrier, the Staghound, the Churchill Mark 7, the Valentine AA Mark 1, and the Valentine Mark 8. As I mentioned before, I am a big fan of being mobile on the battlefield, so sticking with either the Staghound or the Valentine Mark 8 would be my starting point for both having fun and being effective. My personal favourite currently is the Valentine Mark 8, however the Staghound is also a really decent alternative. It's quick, it's agile, and once upgraded you can easily take out larger tanks and speed around the map, avoiding sneaky enemy attacks with the dreaded Panzerfaust. When it comes to the customization and the skill tree with the specializations, I feel as if field repair is essential in order to remain mobile during an engagement. Yes, more ammo is nice, but if you learn where the resupply points are, you shouldn't have that much trouble with ammo. It's also worth noting that you should never get out of your tank to build the resupply points, try and get a teammate to do it for you, because one, you could lose your tank, and two, the animations are so slow, you're probably going to get shot in doing so. Now the next section is up to you. Personally, I have enjoyed using a faster reload and effective anti-tank rounds, but a smarter approach might be to use the track skirts and case round. This will make you deadly against infantry at close to mid-range and give you a little more durability in fights versus assault players. On the Axis side, you get to choose from the following tanks. The Panzer IV, the Panzer 38T, the Tiger I, and the Flak Panzer IV. I personally do not like the Tiger that much, I've used it for a while and it's just too heavy and slow and it tends to lose out to the quicker Staghound 
or Valentine if you get into a fight. And also dodging things from the air can be difficult with the speed. Yes, it can be useful on a game mode that requires sustained fire without too much movement, essentially making you a large emplacement weapon. However, for Conquest, I like mobility and therefore stick with the Panzer 38T when I can. I'd recommend taking the following approach when kitting out your 38T. First choose the Zimmerit, then either the Spotting Flare or Spotting Scope. The Scope is actually pretty good since I've been using it. The Auto Cannon and then the S-Mine Launcher or AT Mines. Some of the gameplay in the background is me using this tank without many specializations unlocked, so bear that in mind. However, it is clear to see what the tank excels at. It is smaller than other tanks, so it can be more difficult to hit, and makes use of bits of cover and fortifications that the larger tanks cannot. It is fairly strong, and a good anti-infantry tank, with its speed and maneuverability being its biggest strength. A final point on the AA tanks, they have been buffed in the recent patch, but I still haven't really used them. I'm not a massive fan of anti-air vehicles in Battlefield games, although I did use the one in BF4 a fair bit, but it was more of an anti-everything vehicle, to be fair. If you are looking to level up the AA tanks, don't always feel as if you need to be taking out AA targets. They are good against infantry. I don't agree with that with the way DICE are balancing them, but you can play with them on maps that are more infantry focused and still be pretty effective. Now we've been through how I set up my tanks, let's go through some little tips and tricks that might help you when trying to get larger killstreaks and more points. Get your squad to build ammo resupply points for you so you don't have to exit the tank. As we went through this before, it can be very difficult to jump out of a tank, build something and jump back in. Learn where these resupply points are located, learn to use them as cover, maybe learn the different approaches you can take to get to them, and often you will find enemy tanks using them. If you're looking for an enemy tank, you don't know where he is, the chances are he'll be by a resupply point. So you can go to there, maybe get a nice little angle on it and take him out. You can also destroy the enemy resupply points that are near their base in order to make the enemy tank's life far more difficult. In the background, you can see how to take down an enemy tank. It worked in BF3, BF4 and BF1. Essentially, you dodge, fire, you dodge, you fire. What you want to do is get the enemy tank to fire and miss you, then you peek out, you shoot, and then you duck behind cover right as he fires. So he's missing every shot and he can't fire a shot because he's reloading when you peek. It's a simple thing to do, but amazing once you master it. Keep moving all the time. Sitting still gets you targeted and therefore dead. The faster tanks are better at moving and their maneuverability is also higher. That's why I prefer them you have less chance of getting taken out by a Panzerfaust at range or maybe a grenade that's been launched across the map. Don't position yourself between two capped flags. These are enemy capped flags. Retreat so you don't have enemies spawning behind you. Rotterdam is a good one for this. Bravo objective and Delta objective and the road between them. If you're going to push towards Delta and cap it and then Bravo gets capped behind you, you're going to have enemies coming from two different directions. Spawn points will be all over the place. You want to retreat all the way past Bravo or past Delta to the resupply point so you have nothing behind you. A very simple thing to do, but it will save your life more times than I'd like to mention. Angling your tank to deflect rounds or at least take less damage work well in Battlefield 4, however it doesn't work well in BF5 at all due to DICE's silly damage system. Panzerfaust can do a lot of damage, a little bit of damage, they can deflect, they can disable parts of your tank, it's not always guaranteed what happens. So there's not a real lot you can do to deflect things. What I would suggest though is use cover sensibly. Use smoke whenever you can, get squad mates to throw smoke for you as well, and if you have the smoke enabled on your tank, use that as much as possible. Don't be afraid to use it and then think you've wasted it. It's always worth just using it, taking cover, repairing, and then getting back in the action. Stick with your squad mates where you can. As I mentioned, squad mates are great. They'll take out the infantry that are looking to shoot you, and also you can back them up in third person mode by looking over cover, round corners, things like that. It helps you a lot and it will help the teammates too. Distract tanks with longer range shots or disable them so your infantry can get close and finish the job. As a tanker, you don't always need to take down the enemy tanks. Your infantry will do it for you. What you want to do is gain their attention so the infantry can get close and take them out. Watch out for planes bombing you. Again, this links into staying still. The big bombers and the Stukas and maybe the Mosquito on the allied side can dive bomb you and take you down in one run. You want to make sure that you know where they are in the sky. If you do see one strafing you, Drive towards it, as he drops his bombs, turn to the left or to the right, and he'll miss. If you're staying still, you're a very easy target. He could bomb either side of you, 
and you're often going to get taken out with no chance of escaping. Use max field of view to increase the chances of seeing an enemy in third person perspective and use your tank to cover fallen squad mates so they can be revived in safety. If you see a squad mate taken down you can almost park on top of him, a teammate can then run up behind the tank and revive him. It's the best way to do it if you don't have any smoke and maybe it's a buddy revive so he's not a medic and doesn't have smoke either. It's very good on maps such as Twisted Steel where there's little cover and I found it working all the time. So there we go, my little Battlefield 5 tank guide. I will probably bring a more in-depth tank guide in the future when DICE decide to balance the tanks again, because I'm sure they're going to, so things will become more technical and accurate from my perspective. Let's see what DICE do. I'm enjoying the tanks. They're not as good as in previous Battlefield games, but they can be fun. Let me know in the comments what you think. Did this guide help you? Have you got anything to add to it? And I'll catch you in the next video.